Hi, I'm Stephanie Wainwright. I'm a wife, a mom, a business owner, and my life is chaotic all the time. So I created this podcast to help you find the funny, the good, while navigating through the chaos. This is Chaotic Compass Podcast. Okay, what up, guys? Um, Thank you for tuning in. It's Chaotic Compass Stephanie here. Um, if you don't know, if you're new here, I, uh, I basically, on a weekly basis, try to dive into something that has uh, either been a triggering point for that week or something chaotic that happened in my real life. Um, this week, um, I am diving into childhood trauma. Um, this is one of those things that I've been trying to work through. If you don't know, I, so my four kids, I have two kids that are mine who have two stepkids and we all live under the same roof with my mother and father. We moved them in um, about two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, it was during pandemic. We bought this house all together and my dream, my goal was to build them a little extension onto the house to where they can live out the rest of their days. So it's flat. They wouldn't have to worry about anything. It would be, you know, handicap accessible and they can live out their days there. Right. So I wouldn't have to worry about nursing homes. I wouldn't have to worry about all, you know, where they're at or who they're, you know, I, they would be right here and I can take care of them. Shit has happened. It's still the goal. Um, so we're, we're all of us are living under this roof, running two businesses, ADHD husband. It's fine. So childhood trauma, living under the same roof with my mother has brought up a lot of shit for me. Um, it has brought back a lot of the same feelings, especially that I felt as a teenager. I've been trying to really process that and work through it. I don't believe in coincidences. I definitely know that everything happens for a reason. And I came across on Facebook, a reel, um, the, the yoga couple. It's literally their name on um, Facebook. Yes, I'm old school. I still do things on Facebook. It's fine. I'm on Instagram too, but it's okay. The yoga couple, they were talking about, you know, if your spouse is acting like this, then this is probably what it is. When they started talking about some of the things, I was like, wow, that's me. But I really didn't dive into it. And I was like, okay, you know, but this morning, it was one of those things where I was like, I've got to figure this out. So this morning, our refrigerator, and if you haven't seen, go over to our Instagram, you can see all of the hot mess. I was trying to dive into fixing our refrigerator. But here's the story how it happened. I'm just getting back from dropping my oldest off at school. Today's Thursday. Thursday's our busiest morning because we have all four kids that go in different directions. Dropped my oldest, who's in ninth grade, off at her school because her school's in a different district because of her dad. So it's not that far. So I drop her off. The second oldest is getting ready to go out the door. And then about that time, my husband goes out the door. And then I've got the two littles that are in elementary school. And my mother on Tuesdays and Thursdays goes and watch or helps watch my niece and nephew. And she's getting ready to go out the door as well. Well, apparently our youngest daughter ripped the bag of Fruity Pebbles a little too far. And so we've got to put that in the Ziploc bag. My son needs to scoop out some of his soup because his tummy's been hurting. And so he's got special soup that his other grandma made. And so we're, we're trying to put that into his thermos, into his little canteen thingy. And there's a hot mess in the kitchen. I have no idea what had happened. My mother's trying to get some ice in her cup and... And she's trying to get out the door. But with all of this chaos that's going on in the kitchen, she's already annoyed. Childhood trauma trigger, right? When my mother starts huffing and puffing, I know something's about to be said or something's about to go down. It's just a trigger. I know what's about to happen. And then she tries to get some ice out of the refrigerator. So my mom's already on the edge. And then there's 
no ice coming out of the refrigerator. She gets pissed off. She's pissed off now. It's 7.30 in the morning, y'all. 7.30 in the morning. I've had a half a cup of coffee. I'm not prepared enough for this stuff. And she's getting pissed off at the refrigerator. She's getting pissed off that there's a mess. She's getting pissed off at the kids. She's getting pissed off. And I was like, I need for you to just take a step back. And and she's like, I'm going to, if you don't fucking fix this refrigerator, I'm going to fucking call an appliance person. And it was like, that's your threat. That's what we're starting off with at 730 in the morning that you're going to call an appliance guy like, okay, so all right, I guess I've got to fix this refrigerator because or else. So I get the kids, they got their lunches packed, they're eating breakfast. And so I'm over here, me, my teeny tiny self trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with this refrigerator with our ice maker the way it is. Um, because it's up against a wall and we have like the the double door refrigerator. We I have to slide it out and then angle it in order to open that door far enough to be able to pull the ice maker out. It's a whole it's a whole thing. But here I am, seven thirty in the morning, hulking out, pulling this refrigerator. I eventually figure out that there is actually no ice in it. So it doesn't matter how much she was bitching. There was no ice to even put in her cup. So it didn't make ice overnight. So now I've got to figure out, well, it's making water. So the line's not clogged. And so I'm literally trouble, troubleshooting the, the refrigerator this morning. I now am in the process of getting my certificate for appliance repair, you guys. Okay. I pull it apart. There doesn't seem to be anything abnormal except for there's an excessive amount of ice at the top. And I was like, I don't know if that's normal or not. So I'm like, hey, I Google with the make and model of our refrigerator. It's a Samsung. Just so you know, don't do it. I Google the make and model and apparently it's a common problem. And not just for Samsungs, but for... If you have a refrigerator that makes ice, so we, the refrigerator is on top, but it's a double door. And then we had the freezer on the bottom. So it's a double door refrigerator and you have the f ice maker in the refrigerator. It's apparently a common problem for that. And it really doesn't matter. It's, it's just a thing for some reason. Um, some of them... I don't know if ours, I'm pretty sure ours does, but I couldn't find the manual. Some of them come with defrost. It makes it because it's so cold in there, but the refrigerator is at a certain temperature. It's the, it's making ice and it's kind of melting and refreezing at the same time is basically what's happening. And so there was this big block of ice that was inhibiting the gears from turning to dump the ice. So I found in this YouTube video, hey, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and defrost that. And then you push this one button to reset the whole thing. And then it should um, start recirculating and then make and then start dumping ice. So I go and get the hairdryer. It's 730 in the morning, 740 at this time. I go get a hairdryer. God, now I gotta get an extension cord, but the hairdryer cord, because it, it can't meet, can't reach to the the plug-in. And then my uh the youngest, my stepdaughter, she comes around the corner, she's getting to go dump her um cereal milk and put her bowl in the sink and she looks at me with this confused face and she's like, I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> it's like, bestie, just keep going on. I got nothing. Just, I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to just, I'm going to blow dry the refrigerator. It's totally normal for a Thursday. So anyways, childhood trauma, I'm, because of that, I'm trying to circumnavigate that this morning and I ended up wasting about an hour of my morning trying to defrost the ice maker. I did it. It's working now. I've got ice. It it really it really made me question a whole lot of like what the fuck, you know, because I'm constantly on edge when I start hearing my mom stomping around and then I'm like where's the kids? It's not so much about me, but where's the kids? Cuz I want to protect my kids, right? That's the mode that I go into. 
So I'm trying to go back through as far as childhood trauma. And there's so, so much of it. And there's so little time. But there was this one reel that popped up with this couple, the yoga couple. And they start talking about how if you can't handle constructive criticism, hello, that's me. Um, you shut down when I make when you make mistakes. Yep. Number two, that's me. You are likely overly addicted to some kind of substance. Hi, Mr. Vodka. It's nice to see you again this evening. Literally, my whole podcast premise is around alcohol. So maybe, yes, number three. Then, as a child, you had extreme parental judgment. And I knew as a child that I was never going to be able to do anything right because of the way my mother looked at everything that I did. And so eventually... I either try to stay out of her way or I just didn't try. And um, But as a kid in school, I pushed really hard as a person in my career. I tried to push to be to, to find the next ladder rung. Um, so it was more motivational for me personally. But when it comes to her, um, I stopped trying to impress her. It was interesting to hear them talk in this real because it was like, wow, this is so me. Um, as a result of these things, apparently, I'm more nitpicky. And I know that I'm definitely this, especially when it comes to my husband, my poor husband. Um, most days, I really question why he's married to me. But um, I know that I'm very nitpicky when it comes to to him. But in the real, it was kind of validating. It's like, for partners, like you need to know that this, this nitpicky, this, you know, not being able to handle constructive criticism, you know, being super hard on themselves when they make mistakes, um, you know, more likely to be addicted. This is something that they've been living with their whole lives. And it's like, y'all, I'm 37. And this is for sure a fact. I've been this way for a very long time. I don't remember any time that I wasn't like this. It was mentioning for the spouse, the significant other, um, how to handle it. And I, and I don't know if necessarily this is exactly... I don't know if this is exactly how to handle it, but this is what they had suggested. Encouragement that it's okay to make mistakes and that you are still loved. Being able to hold space for them when they want to talk about how they fucked up and what they, you know, like, don't, if they're trying to come to you and be like, man, I really fucked up and I'm really having a hard time working through this. Don't tell them, hey, that's not that big of a deal, right? It's a big deal in their brain. And you have to hold space for that. Um, otherwise, making it feel small is just going to set them off into another realm because they're like, oh my God, all the things that I keep bringing up are so small to everybody else, but it's so big to me. And I, it's like, I, I'm questioning what's big and what's small and I'm questioning myself and I'm, I'm having a hard time just being me. I don't even know who me is. And, but this is literally me for a fact the the childhood trauma and you don't even have to the to to label it as trauma you can just say the childhood things the things that went on in my childhood have stuck with me so hard that i have so many negative coping mechanisms um in order to just to just be um, the, the coping mechanisms that I have um, established are because I wasn't taught good coping mechanisms. Um, and I'm still 37 years old trying to figure out what is a good coping mechanism. I do, I do resort to alcohol a lot. I know you guys are probably going to be like, let me call CPS on your kids because I need to... Y'all, it's, it's not like that. It's there's a drink when I get home... And it is what it is, okay? 
But it's one of those things where I can't, I have a hard time when I really have a hard day. It's something that I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to have this. And that's when it gets scary for me. When I'm in my brain, I'm already like, I've got to have a drink. It's like, oh, well, we need to re rewire that and figure that out. But that's for another episode. Right now, we're trying to unravel the childhood traumas. You know, for me as a kid, I knew that I couldn't do anything right. There was no way. It was my, you know, my room was never clean enough. And it was like, then don't look in here. My stuff isn't bothering you. Or, you know, I left a dish in the sink, but I didn't put water in it and the cereal dried up on it. And it's like, well, then just tell me to wash it. Then tell me that that's, you know, and it was like my responsibility to, you know, wash dishes anyways, you know, wash my dish. And so it's like, I'll take care of it. It's not a big deal. And then it's like, so now I need to make sure that the dishes aren't even in the sink by the time you get home. And, you know, and it's like, or I need to make sure that my chores are done before you even get home. So you don't even say anything and that I'm out of your sight by the time you get home. So you don't come and attack me that, I started to get heavily into um, working a lot as a 16 year old. I was heavily involved in a lot of um, extracurricular activities for my senior year, Um, FCLA, FBLA, um, you know, color guard, uh, drama club. I was in any, any freaking thing that I could be a part of. Plus, working the and then I was in church I was doing um, I was in choir I was a part of the youth group I was leading I was part of like youth evangelism conferences I was in everything that I could be and then I had found a family that was so different than mine my boyfriend at the time's family was so accepting and so loving and they sat down to the dinner table and they prayed and they talked about their day which nobody asks me about my day even though I'm hustling and I'm busting my ass nobody's asking me how I'm doing you know um and they ask me about you know what are some cool things that I've got going on they actually are engaged And it was like, I fell in love. I was, I was so in love with my boyfriend at the time, but then I fell even more in love with him because of his family, because of his upbringing, you know? Um, For me, just having people that want to talk to me um, was so crazy because my mom doesn't want to talk because you're kind of an inconvenience and she's got more things going on but if you don't tell her all the things then you then she thinks that you're you know hiding things from her and my dad just tries to avoid any of the drama and so he's typically like like now he watches Fox News on repeat all the time and so my grandmother my dad's mom was that person for me, was the person I could call, regardless of what she's got going on, regardless of what I've got going on, I could literally call her and be like, hey, I've got this problem and I'm struggling. What do you think? And she would find some way to bring me either a Bible verse, which was hard for a while there, um, or a um, some kind of phrase that's like, it's open-ended and you can take it either way. You know, like how a, a, like a fortune cookies thing, you know, you can, you know, be like, the answer you, you're looking for is a mirror, you know? And it's like, wait, hold on. And I, I had actually, so crazy. I had actually seen an episode on Grey's Anatomy where, um, where one of the main characters told another character that, you know, be like, the answer you're looking for is a mirror. And it's like, you know, they start going down both paths. And it was like, my grandmother actually has told me that as, as a kid, you know, 
she literally was trying to not persuade me in either direction. She wanted to hear my thoughts. And then once she heard my thoughts, she tried to guide me through it. But she would give these open-ended, I guess, just, I don't know what the word would be, but just these dialogue starters of like, just think of it. The answer you're looking for is a mirror. They're like, oh, the mirror, like, I'm not going to really like myself when I'm I'm looking into the mirror. Like, oh, gosh, or... The, the mirror is, uh, you know, I can, I can change, you know, my appearance and I can, I can be better and I can work harder and do, you know, like the answer could be really anything if you think about it. But, um, but my grandmother was definitely that person I would go to all the time to, to ask, to talk to. And then once I really got um, involved with my, uh, my boyfriend at the time, his family became his, his mom, his stepdad, his sister, um, they, his little brother, they were all became people that I would go to, to talk to about anything. It was nice having an older sister that, you know, even though she was only, maybe a, a year or so older than me, but it was nice, nice to have somebody that was older than me to have a conversation with that actually, um, because my sister was three years younger than me and she, how my sister handled things and how I handled things, it's still to this day. My sister is, um, she doesn't, she doesn't want to call, cause a rift. And so she'll be like, She'll just go with whatever anybody tells her. She has a hard time making up her mind. She is very indecisive when it's left to her to make a decision. She doesn't want to make anybody unhappy. And typically, she would rather be holed up in her room or her house and not go and do anything. She, I can get her out sometimes, but she would be more content just staying at home. For me, fuck that. I want to go. I want to talk to all the people because my love language, because my love language is communication. And that's what I didn't get as a kid. And so interesting because it's so funny how love languages happen as part of how you grow up. And it's like I can and I think I talked about this in another episode. It's like I can literally look at each one of my kids and I can pretty much like pinpoint their love languages or at least their major love languages because you always have like a major one and then you have a side one. You typically have two. But um but it's like because I didn't get the communication as a kid, I really struggled with that as like that's what I was looking for in a person. But, like you can talk to me and you want to spend time with me. Oh my gosh, because I didn't get that as a kid. And so you know, because the one person that I saw that really loved me, my grandmother, constantly said, I love you. And it was that person. And it's like, oh, wow, this is what love looks like. Love looks like having conversations and asking about your day. Love looks like spending as much time as you can with them. Love looks like this, you know? And for me, it's, it's so crazy to look back at some of the things that have happened in my childhood that have totally shaped who I am now and that I'm still trying to unravel as an adult to be better. One of the major things for me is I I want to run. I've talked about this as well in the past. Like I don't do well when I've taken the time, I've tried to explain to you the why of what's going on, why I'm upset, why this is not okay, and trying to have the conversation with you to talk more about what's going on and to try to circumnavigate to try to do better and I'm not getting anywhere or it's escalating or there's defensiveness. You know, I'm met with defensiveness or, or <laughs> this is a big one, or you tell me, that it's not a big deal. You tell me that it's not a big deal. I see red. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with the conversation. I don't. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to be with you. I don't want to be around you. I don't want to. I don't want to even see you. I'm. I'm done because you're telling me what I took the time to explain to you is not a big deal. Then I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. That sends me over the edge. But that's a. That is a childhood response. And I'm trying to work through that. But at the same time, it's like, why is that your response? 
why is that your response to tell me that it's not that big of a deal? I know it's not that big of a deal in your eyes, but you've got to think, hey, she's taking the time. She's coming to you with a problem. Let's just at least hold space for this. Ugh. So I hope that this conversation helped you. I'm going to I'm going to see if I can tag um, the yoga couple in the show notes. Definitely going to uh, post or you know share out one of their posts on Facebook. It's they have so many great things going on. They actually um, I want to kind of give a little shout out to their book. I haven't read it yet, but this this portion of what we're talking about the inner childhood wounds this this uh I. I don't know what everything that I've hit on apparently is in this book from page 125 to 130. So the book is called The Inner Work, The Inner Work. And it literally like they don't even name themselves as just the yoga couple and they have a couple other people that they wrote this book with. So check it out. But that's all I have for you guys tonight. So it's it's May. It's May, you guys. It's getting crazy with work. Um, so we're, we're getting into that season. I hope you've got some awesome things planned for the summer to enjoy the weather to, or to even retreat away from it. You go in north, you go into the mountains. You, tell me what you're doing. Um, you can always message me. You can always message me on Facebook or Instagram, or you can email me at info at chaoticcompass.com. I love to hear from you. We've got some great stories and stuff that people have messaged me and I love to talk about it. Like it's kind of like a Dear Abby column. So again, appreciate you tuning in guys and have a great night. Thanks for tuning in guys. I appreciate all of your love and support. If you really love today's episode, you should subscribe. And if you subscribe, then you get notifications of when my next episode launches. So Another way to be super awesome would be to leave a rating and review or recommend it to your friends and family. If you're wicked awesome, you've already done all three. Another way to keep up with me and my crazy family is check out my website at chaoticcompass.com and I do blog and other stuff there. So I appreciate everything for you guys. I do this for you. So keep it up because the more you subscribe, the more I do.